This week on The Wire, RBA repeats, no rate rise. Aussie growth lags behind world's best, and national vacancy rate hits 10 year low. G'day guys, my name is Tim Guest and welcome to The Wire, the week in real estate. You can get all the top stories happening this week in real estate, finance, investment, and more. Kicking it off with our top story for this week, RBA repeats, no rate rise. So Reserve Bank Governor Philip Lowe has assured home buyers yet again that he will not lift interest rates to cool housing markets. Now, house prices have risen 15.6% nationally in the past year, and that's coming from CoreLogic, with record levels of borrowing. But Lowe says there is a misconception the RBA will step in to subdue, subdue price rises by raising the official interest rate. Now, he said it would be the wrong thing to do, and I don't think it would work. If borrowing is unsustainable, we'll be talking to APRA about prudential tools, but we are not going to use monetary policy to deal with rising house prices. Now, the RBA left the cash rate at a record low of 0.1% at this month's meeting, and Lowe reiterated that he does not expect a change in the official interest rate until 2024. Now, the bank wants inflation in the 2 to 3% target range before lifting the cash rate, which would require wage growth above 3% and a 4% jobless rate. Currently, inflation is running at 1.1%, wage growth is 1.5%, and the jobless rate is 5.1%. Now, guys, moving on to our next story. Aussie growth lags behind world's best. So house price growth rates in Canberra, Hobart, Darwin, and Adelaide are among the th top third for cities across the world, according to a new report, but lag the world's best. Now, the Global Residential Cities Index from Knight Frank has compared price growth in 150 cities in the March quarter. On average, urban house prices rose 7.4% annually across the world, which was the highest since 2007, with 43 cities registering growth rates above 10%. That was led by two cities in Turkey, uh, Imzur at 34% and Ankara at 30%. Now, Wellington in New Zealand, Seoul in South Korea, Halifax in Canada, Moscow in Russia, and Phoenix in the US also made the top 10 rankings for annual growth. In Australia, Canberra had the highest annual growth of 15.7%, which bumped it up to 17th place in the index. Hobart's growth rate of 13.8% placed it at 23rd internationally. Darwin, with 10.8%, was in 41st place, while Adelaide was 44th, with its rate of 10%. Now, guys, moving on to our final story of the week. National vacancy rate hits 10-year low. So the national residential rental vacancy rate fell to 1.7% in June from 1.8% in May. Now, SQM Research says this is the lowest vacancy rate nationally since 2011. Vacancy rates continue to fall for Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide and Hobart, and five of the eight capital cities have vacancy rates below 1%, which is headed by Darwin and Hobart both at 0.4%. Now, Melbourne's vacancy rate fell to 3.5% in June from 3.7% in May, while Sydney's vacancy rates dropped from 2.8%, uh, sorry, dropped to 2.8% from 2.9%. Vacancy rates also fell further in the Sydney and Melbourne CBD areas, representing a return to longer-term growth levels. Now, Brisbane vacancy rate has dropped from 2.4%, a year to 1.3%. Now, while Darwin has fallen from 1.8% to 0.4%, and Perth is down from 1.5% to 0.9%. Now, SCRIM Managing Director Louis Christopher says rents are now accelerating in our largest capital cities, which may have ramifications for the CPI uh, red in the coming quarters. Well, guys, that's it for today. There are top stories. Now, please don't forget to like, comment, and share this video, and follow or subscribe wherever you are seeing this. Have a great week, and remember, guys, there is only one thing in life that makes a difference, and that's action. Thanks a lot. Bye for now.